Hey, what's going on guys? Kermak Games here. You know, like, I know that many programmers who create in chess engines usually like to make some sort of a websites showcasing their work. And uh, I've heard that uh, many guys actually would like to create a playable version of their engine, uh, an online playable version. So the idea is to give your users an experience of uh, playing versus the chess engine that you've developed without uh, downloading or installing it, just uh, using the bare browser for the purpose. And um, you might wonder that in order to do this, you need an engine being written in JavaScript to run entirely in browser. And that means that your engine should be much weaker and slower compared to if it's done in C. But uh, if we have a use, if we make use of some, uh, a couple of really cool libraries for chess programming, then we can uh, run our USHS engines written in C programming languages directly in the browser. So uh, I'm going to start a new tutorial series uh, describing the exact process of creating this sort of an interaction between the web browser and the chess engine. And what you can see now at your screen is the very first prototype. So I'm going to be working on this uh, more and more uh, uh, over the tutorial series, but I just didn't really want to make the full-blown app from scratch uh, uh, in order to live code this with you guys instead of just using my pre-coded stuff. So, uh, well, let me actually uh, play a couple of moves to give you an idea of how it plays chess. Now, the time control is miserable. It's only 0.1 per second at the moment, so it's not really that fast, uh, but Anyway, it plays chess, which is really kind of good thing, basically. So, yeah, it seems like I just lost a piece. So, most likely, I'm going to lose this game quite pretty quickly. So, yeah, uh, I just... Uh, j just believe me that the checkmate detection is already being implemented within this GUI, so that's kind of working. But, well, let, let me just... Let me just try to lose as, as quick as possible, just to, to give uh, a computer... Uh, an opportunity to checkmate me as soon as possible. So this is it, so I got checkmated. And now just a few words on the technologies involved in this project. So what you can see here is the Flask web application. So Flask is the minimalist uh, Python web framework uh, that uh, uh, I'm, I'm using professionally as a freelancer. Uh, also, in order to wrap uh, uh, to, in, in order to handle the UCI interaction with my engine. In the back end, I've used this Python chess library, which is the fantastic Python library. And here in particular in UCI uh, and export engine communication here, uh, I've used this uh, standard piece of code to, to, make, to actually interact with the engine from the Python interface. And uh, on, the, on the front end, I'm using this chessboard.js, which is chessboard from uh, a famously chess site. And also it's powered by so-called library chess.js, which helps to take care of state of the game, like uh, checkmate, uh, things like that. Because uh, chessboard.js is a pure dump widget, which doesn't support the game state and things like that. Uh, uh, I was really, uh, I was really uh, surprised when uh, I realized that the FEN supported by the bare chessboard.js uh, only contains the positions, the position, and doesn't really care about the game state. While this chess.js library, this one, actually allows to empower the chessboard.js widget with this uh, state, game state things and uh, uh, things like that, basically. So uh, another, uh, uh, j just to give you a quick idea of how it works. So if you just uh, open the net, uh, open the browser developer tools and go into the network tab. So let me just start a new game. So starting a new game is the bare uh, GUI uh, function just to reset the board and that's it. And if you just uh, make a move, what happens? So mm, I'm making the asynchronous post request to this endpoint, which is called make move. And on my, uh, let me just open the code to give you an idea how it works. So this is the entire code for the current app. It's not really that much. So here we have the index, this, this is the home or index or root route. We just uh, return the uh, template uh, rendered by the Jinja template rem renderer, which is the standard Python template renderer, basically. So here is how the HTML looks like. And uh, these scripts are basically copied from, uh, from this example here, where we want to 
uh, make only legal moves, so literally taking this code and elder this file a bit. That's that's basically it. And also taking this code to uh, actually interact with our engine. So every t so uh, by the start uh, of this Flask web application, we actually create an engine uh, an engine instance. Uh, there is some questionable stuff uh, regarding the thread in here, so it's partially uh, implemented uh, using the Python chess library itself. Uh, it might not be always the case. Well, I didn't yet uh, dig, dig it that deep, so I'm not going to be talking about the, the threading at the moment. Uh, but at very least, uh, from the user experience, we have, uh, uh, we have this uh, uh, engine work being done asynchronously because uh, the XHR, XHR request itself is uh, it's kind of like uh, I just need to close the console to make uh, to avoid re uh, re refreshing images all the time so uh, it actually <laughs> okay I just forgot what I wanted to say okay forget that so let's let's go back so here, within the make move, we're handling uh, uh, the FEN. So we're sending the FEN. What I wanted to show you guys that uh, when we're just making a move here, uh, if we have a look at the post request parameters, we're just taking the FEN and sending this to the back end. And then on the back end here, uh, we're just uh, uh, retrieving the post method, uh, the post request here. We're extracting the FEN from, from the request body here and uh, initializing the Python chess internal board and then using this internal board as an argument to pass to the engine.play which is an abstraction to wrap over the USA interaction and here we can specify either time or depth well obviously it's not a full-blown GUI like Arena or things like that uh, and that's the matter of uh, creating another project one day which would be the full-blown uh, GUI like maybe like arena well i'm not too smart to make i'm not that smart to make a gui like arena but something similar probably is would fit my skills i hope uh but at, but uh at the very beginning i just want to make this little uh, gui for my engine uh, without a, an ability to play versus our other engine so this uh, this are just my future plans which if this series uh, would be um, good for you guys so if you like this well probably we can make another one on making a full-blown gui uh, anyway, so we're just taking the FEN from the uh, user interface, from the browser literally, then we're parsing this to the uh, Python chess internal board state, making this, uh, uh, passing this board to our chess engine, it makes the move, and this info uh, variable holds, holds the move itself, and then we're just uh, making this move on the internal board uh, provided by Python chess and extracting the FEN from that board. And this FEN is actually returned back to our uh, user interface. So this is quite pretty simple and straightforward. So uh, we have a look. Yeah, so here is the post request. So every time uh, we drop in a piece, so this is the on drop event, event from the chessboard.js. So every time we drop in a piece of making this asynchronous post request to this sort of uh, URL endpoint, we're passing our FEN as the string with this data parameter and then we're retrieving FEN back, so this FEN is something that we retrieve back, and uh, we're just uh, loading this FEN to um, chess.js game variable. Uh, uh, that uh, so this game is the instance of uh, chess.js. It's called simply the chess constructor. It's not the chess board. It's just to to, to keep track of the board state because chess uh, chess board JS itself that doesn't support the full blown FEN as I was already mentioning. So we're just taking this FEN. Uh, here uh, and then uh, so we're loading this to this like, like a game state and then uh, we're using this uh, FEN where we're extracting this FEN from the game state and using it in order, in order to initialize the board position but uh, actually board position doesn't take the full blown FEN it only takes the position part so things like side of move and things like that uh, and in peasant square uh, half move counters they all are stored in in the game variable not in the board position variable but that doesn't really matter that much at the moment and this is it so uh, the only line uh no it's not no sorry sorry guys so here uh if the game is over we're just updating our status and within the update status method we just check for a checkmate for a draw and things like that well i didn't yet implement the threefold repetition uh rule and i actually 
50 rule repetition rule is not even implemented in my uh, jazz engine itself but it, it doesn't matter uh, in terms of GUI really so uh, really lots of things to do here some more features that I would like to add one day would probably be like so this uh, chess.js library uh, allows you to keep track of the game PGN so we can uh, fan uh, we can bring this fancy table of uh, PGN game on the right or on the left I'm not sure about the layout of the, at the moment uh, and actually have a very simple but uh, I, ho I hope pretty deployable uh, version uh, this interface to to interact with uh, with my engine and eventually i'm gonna load this uh, to my python anywhere account uh, and by the way for free because mm, already a free account at python anywhere well i didn't yet test this but most likely this should kind of work because uh, I, I did test this in separate it allows you to run the chess engine on the uh, they use uh, uh, amazon web servers some free uh, versions of Amazon Web Service. So you can run a chess program there uh, and you can install whatever Python, Python Flask app there as well, some any dependencies you need. So most likely this should be working. Well, and probably at the very end, I will add some information like about the engine, uh, engine like contact the uh, author and things like that. Well, I'll try to keep this minimalist design, which I'm really fond of. And uh, I really hope that maybe not the particular solution and not the particular implementation but the general idea of how to proceed would help uh, a chess engine developers to actually uh, make something similar for their own engines because when i'm looking at uh, really cool and strong engines pages uh, i can't see an ability to play versus those engines online which is a bit weird so you know like for average users it's it's quite complicated to even to download the engine and connect this connect it to say arena gui or things like that so he needs to install that arena gui so it's you kind of limit in the source of your potential users if you don't provide the ability of playing versus your engine online so exactly playing versus your 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 c uchs engine online is the exact purpose of the following tutorial series so i hope to see you guys uh in this uh, uh i really hope uh, that you guys would be following this series with me and it would be live coding uh so you see like i've just prepared ju just recorded the very bare minimum uh, of what we have and the further when we reach this state probably in the next video then we'll go in in a complete live coding mode so i would be adding features one by one and see how engine looks how, how the gui starts look like a real gui so this is it from my side guys really hope to see you uh, on this channel again so until that time and take care